Hey everyone, it's Ms. Butler. I'm going to do a video on dimensional analysis. So dimensional analysis is just a fancy way of saying um, unit conversion. So for example, say like you have a measurement in inches, but you want to know how many centimeters it is, or how you have ounces and you want milliliters, or um, your doctor tells you your weight in kilograms and you're curious how many pounds you weigh. Um, miles to kilometers, any of those things where you go from one unit to the other is called dimensional analysis. So there's, there's going to be an easy formula that we use, um, and that's this guy up top, this guy here. So basically, it's a multiplication. So you're going to take what's given, so they're always going to give you a number, and really what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by a fraction. So I kind of write mine like this. I put the fraction in parentheses. Um, it's just how I learned it. No rhyme or reason. This one, they kind of use a box. But basically, I'm taking a number and multiplying it by a fraction. Okay. Inside the fraction, we're going to use a conversion factor, which I call equalities. So we have to have some sort of equality um, in order to do a unit conversion. So if we have the equality, um, the part of the equality that contains whatever unit was given, that goes on bottom, and the unit that we want goes on top. The way I remember it is our bodies. Um, we, if we see something that looks delicious, like a donut, we want to eat it. And I eat things at the top of my body. That's where my head is, my mouth. And anything our body does not want, no nutrients or anything like that, we poop out. And so that's our bottom or our butts where we poop stuff out. So whatever we're trying to get rid of, that goes on the bottom. Okay, sorry if I grossed you out because I said the word poop, but you're going to have to get over it. Okay, so here's an example that should be pretty easy. And again, I'm making, I know this is easy for a lot of you, but I'm trying to show you the process. So it says, how many dozen do I have if I have 2,789 eggs? Well, my formula says I take what's given, that's this guy, 2,789 eggs. So whatever they give me to start with in the problem, and I'm going to multiply it by a fraction. Okay, luckily I have a equality that's given to me, or sometimes you can look these up in a chart or you know them off the top of your head, or you can Google them, um, but the equality is a conversion factor. So I know that 12 eggs equals one dozen. That's the equality I'm gonna plug in. One side of the equality will go on top, one side of the equality will go on bottom. How do I decide? Well, the unit that I want at the end, what they're asking for, which is dozen, is gonna go on top. So this one dozen, goes on top. Notice that the number one stays with dozen and the 12 eggs is gonna go on bottom. So I'm just plugging one side of the equality in the top, one side on the bottom. Now we multiply. So in my calculator, I'm actually gonna take 2,789 eggs times one dozen and then I'm gonna divide that answer by 12 eggs. So usually what I put in my calculator is just 2,789 times one, I hit equals, and then divide that answer by 12. What I end up getting is 232.4, and now let's look at units. So I'm gonna look back up here. I noticed that on the top of my equation, oops, go back. Guys. On the top of my equation, I have this unit eggs, and on the bottom, so those cancel. So the only unit I have left is dozen. So I'm left with 232.4 dozen is my answer. For these problems, when you are looking at significant figures, we're doing multiplication, but I want you to think of these equalities as a definition which means they have an infinite number of sig figs. So really, for a multiplication problem, all I'm doing is looking here, the weakest link is what's out in front, because the, this guy is infinity sig figs, so this guy is one, two, three, four sig figs, which means I needed to round my answer to four sig figs, which I did. All right, let's try another one. A new baby is born and is measured to be 20.2 inches long. How long is the baby in centimeters? In this problem, I am given the 20.2 inches, so that's gonna go out in front. That's what they're telling me to start with in the problem. 
I'm going to multiply by my equality. And you can see I looked up on the internet that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Well, I want to get rid of inches, right? That's the unit we're trying to get rid of. So the one inch is going to go on the bottom. And the unit where we desire or that we would like to have is centimeters. So the 2.54 centimeters goes on top. So notice this given in the problem here, the equality is what goes in the fraction, okay? When I multiply 20.2 times 2.54 and divide that answer by one, I get 51.3, and we're gonna have inches times centimeters divided by inches, and we can look at some cancellation, inches on top, inches on bottom. So really, oops, my bad. We should be left with 50.3 centimeters. So notice by having the inch on the top and the bottom, it cancels, and that's the whole idea of dimensional analysis, is we're going from one unit to another by canceling out units. All right, let's try one more together. If I drink 200 milliliters of Diet Coke, how many ounces did I drink? So we're started with the given, which is 200 milliliters of D-Coke. We're gonna multiply by the equality, and you can see Google has given me some information that um, one ounce is um, equal to 29.57 milliliters. So I'm gonna put the unit to get rid of on bottom that's this milliliters, so they cancel out, and one ounce on top. When I multiply, I'm gonna take 200 times one, hit equals, and divide that answer by the bottom of the fraction, 29.57. My calculator spits out 6.76. Let's check units. I should have milliliters times, we multiplied by the ounces on the top, even though it was just times one. Many of you will do that in your head, I'm guessing, divided by the milliliters on the bottom. So if we let, check cancellation, milliliters will cancel, right? Milliliters on top, milliliters on bottom, and we're left only with ounces. Um, this is a good strategy to check to make sure everything cancels because the most common thing we see is that kids flip this fraction here. If they flip the equality, and then you'd end up with something weird like milliliters squared divided by ounces, like nothing will cancel out. It's always good to check yourself. Um, let's do some sig figs. So remember, this is infinite number of sig figs. This one, the decimal point is absent, so we start counting from the Atlantic Ocean. Doesn't count, doesn't count, one sig fig. So my answer here can only have one sig fig. So we got six, we look at the seven, it rounds up, so I get seven ounces would be the correct answer. All right, you go to the doctor and he says that you weigh 87 kilograms. How much do you weigh in pounds? Um, so notice we were given 87 kilograms. That's gonna go out in front. And I know that 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. So I would like you to pause the video and try this on your own. I'll come up with the answer on the next page. All right, I got 190 pounds because of sig figs. I had to round a little bit um, to get the correct number of sig figs, but hopefully you got the same answer and saw that your units canceled. All right, if I'm driving 65 miles per hour in the US, what speed am I traveling in Italy um, where they measure kilometers per hour? So I've given you a little bit of a conversion from the internet, same idea, pause the video for me, try this one, and I will put up the answer for you to check. All right, hopefully we got right around 104 kilometers. This is one of those weird cases where I'm trying to round 104 kilometers to two sig figs because 65 only has two significant figures. Um, so you have to use scientific notation. So I've just moved this decimal point two spots over, that's the times 10 squared, and then 1.0. Those are my two sig figs out in front. Um, so just a little kind of weird trick there. But hopefully you got the right idea for the unit conversion. Remember, 65 goes out in front, and then we're using this equality to figure out what's what um, the top and the bottom of the fraction, what we want to eat, what we want at the end goes on top, what we want to poop out and get rid of goes on bottom. All right, you're going to see these in our gas law unit, so I figure I might as well show you now because it's the same idea. 
um, what you see is a really long equality and these are all units for measuring pressure so a lot of times we'll measure like air pressure or a gas pressure um, and so I know it looks intimidating but really we're still only going to focus on the two that we care about what's given and what we want so a lot of times we're going to ignore the other um, parts of the equality so this one says convert 2.25 atmospheres Okay, so that's what's given, 2.25 atmospheres. And they said convert it to millimeters of mercury. So at the end, when we get our answer, we want it to be in millimeters of mercury. That's the goal. So really, I'm looking up here. Here's my atmospheres. This is the unit that they gave me. MMHG is right here. This is what we want. So what we can do is we can ignore this, this, this and this that's all extra information for a different problem okay so same idea really all we're looking at is one atm equals 760 mmhg so what do i want as my final unit we want mmhg so 760 mmhg goes on top we want to get rid of atm so one atm or atmosphere goes on bottom and take 2.25 times 760 Divide that answer by 1, and I get 17, 10. And notice atmosphere on the top, atmosphere on the bottom, so everything cancels. Okay, I got three sig figs there. Count this way. Doesn't count. One, two, three. Three sig figs, so we're good. All right. I know these are new, um, but I hopefully if you just isolate the two things we care about, which is tor. That's our given, and then kilopascals is our want. Um, I'd like you to pause the video and try this problem. All right, I got 96 kPa as my answer because they wanted kilopascals. I ignored ATM, I ignored MMHG, I ignored INHG, and I ignored this guy. Just the two that we care about um, for this problem. All right, later this semester and next semester, you will see Mole Island. Um, so again, this is kind of like the pressure, something new, but let's see if you can apply the same ideas. We won't need all of these, all four of them, just two of them. So figure out which two you need. Pause the video. Give this a try. I have 2.4 moles of water. How many particles of water do I have? And you'll have to put scientific notation in your calculator. All right, hopefully you got 1.4 times 10 to the 24th. That's a really big number, but particles are pretty small, so that's common um, that we have a lot of particles. Okay, so hopefully you see that the, the unit mole, I know that's new to you, but mole canceled out, and we're left over with particles.